Have you ever wondered why the failure rate of businesses is so high? Are you too afraid to start your own business in case you fail? Do you lie in bed at night wondering how you're going to pay for everything and wondering how you're going to manage your cash? Don't worry, because today I have all the answers for you and it's way simpler than you might expect. And if you stay until the end, I even have a couple of bonus tips for you that might help as well. With a failure rate of 20% for new business startups in Australia, you do find yourself wondering why this might be the case. And mostly it's down to pretty much one simple thing, and that is the management of cash. More specifically, the speed at which it comes in and goes out. For a new business, the problem, generally speaking, is that the money is flowing out of the business faster than it's coming into the business. This isn't entirely to be unexpected. It's because at the beginning of owning a business, you have lots of costs to outlay. So you have things like website costs and setup costs, advertising costs, all those sorts of things that you, once you've spent them, you don't have to spend them again. The trouble is you have to spend them at a time when money flowing into the business is scarce or slow. Now you can get around this disparity by using a couple of different tools. So firstly, you could use seed investment, which is when you ask someone to invest in your business in exchange for some ownership percentage of your business. It's also called angel investment. You could borrow money from the bank. You could set up a bank overdraft facility. You could invest some of your own money into the business. There are a number of different ways that you could do this, but they are all designed to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to provide the business with the startup cash that it needs to get going. You need to remember though, that at some point you're going to have to pay that money back again out of revenue coming in later on down the track. So you need to make sure that money does actually come in later on down the track. Otherwise the business is going to fail. If you're a more established business, if you've got a cash flow problem, then it's usually down to one of two events. The first one being you're going through a period of expansion. When you're expanding a business rapidly, it means generally speaking that you're having to outlay costs in advance of getting the money in. So you're having to pay salaries and wages on work to be done that you haven't actually been paid for yet. The other reason that you might be having a cash flow problem is that you are simply spending more money than you are earning and you're not doing anything to bridge the gap. On the one hand, you know money will be coming in later on down the track, so you can manage everything in the short term. On the other, you don't. And ultimately, the risk here is that you will end up with a business failure. So what does business failure actually look like? Well, in many instances, it doesn't actually have to mean bankruptcy. There are a number of steps you can go through between a cash flow shortfall and business bankruptcy. However, undeniably, whatever the outcome, you are most likely to be left out of pocket owing money. And if you're lucky, you don't have to sell the family home to be able to pay off that debt. So the incentive here to manage your money and manage it well should be pretty high. So how do we manage our money to make sure that we have more of it coming in than we do of it going out? Or at least if we do have it going out, that it's time to match the money coming in. Well, planning and vigilance are the two things that I would always recommend. A little time spent on planning at the beginning of the year can go an awfully long way in terms of knowing how you're going to be going for the rest of the year. You're going to know when bills are going out, you're going to know when bills are coming in, you'll be able to plan for them, you'll be able to make sure that you have all the money that you need when you need it to do things like buy that new equipment or pay the tax bill. Vigilance is the second step. What I mean here is keeping an eye on things as you go along day to day. You need to be continually checking your finances seeing if there are new ways to do what you're doing today. Streamline your operations. Use technology to make things quicker, faster and easier. Or perhaps use technology to reduce your expenses. Let's check those subscriptions. Do you still use them? Perhaps renegotiating with your suppliers might be the way to go. They are all ways of staying vigilant around managing your money and making sure that you don't spend a penny more than you absolutely need to, to actually make your money. One of the best ways to actually manage the physical money coming into your business is through the use of bank accounts as buckets. Here at Inventor, we have five bank accounts which we use to manage our cash. Each account does something different, so I never have to worry about having the money in the right account to pay the bills. We never have a shortfall. We use an income account to manage all the money coming in from the fees that we are generating. This is our main account, but it rarely sits with anything in it. It normally only has a couple of dollars in there. And that's because all of that money in that account is transferred out to the other four accounts. We have a tax account. This is where the GST money is transferred into. So that's the first thing we do when fees arrive. We transfer the GST. We also transfer superannuation and PAYG payments into that account as well plus a percentage to go towards our annual tax bill that we're expecting to have to pay. We also have an owner's compensation and a profit account and a set percentage is transferred into each of those accounts as well. And lastly, we have an operating expenditure account and that is literally where everything else goes and that's where all the bills are paid from other than the tax bill. It may sound like I spend hours each week doing banking, but I really don't. 
I literally spend a couple of hours each week doing the banking and making sure everything is transferred to where it needs to be. I get a kick out of watching the bank accounts increase and knowing that the money is there for us to be able to spend on what we need to be spending money on. So I find it quite fun and exciting. Sad, I know, but I find it quite fun and exciting. Implicit in all of this is that you keep your business banking and your personal banking completely separate. It's cleaner, easier, and far more efficient to keep everything separate. Now, I mentioned before that we have a bank account that's been set up to manage profit. You might be asking yourself, isn't profit and my salary the same thing? And the answer, I'm afraid, is no, it's not. You see, my salary is an expense to the business and it's compensation for me spending my time in the business giving other businesses advice just as it would be if I worked for another firm. The profit is the amount left over after all the other expenses have been paid. It is the golden goose, and it should be the aim of every business to be making a profit. Deciding on what the profit should be upfront and then physically transferring the money each time you get paid is just managing the cash to make sure that we actually reach our goals. The same could be asked for the owner's compensation account. And again, the answer is no. Why not? I'm the one with my backside on the line financially. I'm the one that's taken the risk to set this business up and every single time we do something, I'm the one that's taking on that risk. And the owner's compensation, well, that's my reward for doing that. Again, putting it on one side every time we get paid just means that I know that I'm going to be rewarded for the risks that I have taken. Before I go on to the bonus tips, if you've learned one useful thing in this video, perhaps you would consider giving it a thumbs up. If you've learned two useful things in this video, perhaps you would like to subscribe to our channel so that you support more channels like this one, small channels, to continue to provide you with great content. Right, so bonus tip number one. It's all about your structure. The structure that you're going to use to run your business under is really quite important. Quite often, it's left until a later point in time to worry about it, but it really should be dealt with upfront. Yes, it's going to cost you money, but it's also going to save it for you in the long run. So when I say structure, I mean the structure through which your business is going to operate. There are four main structures in Australia, but by far and away, the most common one that we see is the sole trader. The reason for this is it's quick, simple, cheap, and easy to set up. All you really need is an ABN, and if you want a business name, you can register one, and hey presto, off you go. What are the problems with a sole trader? Well, first and foremost, there are problems with separation, and by this what I mean is, is separating the business entity from you as the personal individual. I see a lot of people very confused about where the business starts and stops, and where the personal side of things takes over. I like to think of the business in this instance as your best friend. You do loads of stuff with them, but you don't sleep with them. In other words, go out, do the work, earn the, earn the money, but keep everything separate. Do everything that you do personally in your personal stuff and do everything for the business in the business stuff. Hence why we use so many different bank accounts. A couple of other problems with using a sole trader as a business entity revolve around liability and tax. As a sole trader, you have no protection against creditors should something happen and they come after you for some money. They can go after your personal assets and leave you with absolutely nothing. This can be an especially big problem if you have a family. It's not quite so easy to go and hunker down on your parents' floor for a few months until you sort yourself back out again when you have kids in tow. The other problem is tax rates. As a sole trader, you are taxed in exactly the same way as an employee is taxed, which means at the time of recording this video, you could be taxed at up to 47% tax on your profit in your business. That means that you work until Wednesday afternoon before you actually get to keep the money. As a business grows, we will often see them wanting to have a more commercial, a more tax effective structure to run out of. Whilst there are a few options around this, and I have done a video previously, which I will leave a link into in the notes below. My favorite by far and away is the company. A company provides great creditor protection in that it makes it way harder for them to go after your personal assets. And the tax rate is way more attractive too, at a flat rate of 25% for businesses earning less than $10 million in top line revenue. For me, it's a win-win. Bonus tip number two, you can't, and indeed you shouldn't, ever restructure your business purely to get a tax advantage. There has to be a commercial reason to do it. However, it would be naive to think that tax is not a consideration when we're talking about business structures. So what exactly are the tax rates? For individual taxpayers in Australia, at the time of recording this video, the tax rates are as follows. Zero to 18,200, zero. 18,201 to 45,000, 19%. 45,001 to 120,000, 32.5 cents. 120,001 to 180,000, 37 cents. 
$180,000 or more, 45 cents. You've got to remember we have to add a 2% Medicare levy onto all of these rates, so all of them bump up by 2%. These tax rates are going to change from 1 July as a result of legislation passed very recently through Parliament. So the new tax rates from 1 July 2024 are going to be as follows. 0 to 18,200, nil. 18,200 to 45,000, 16%. 45,000 and $1 to 135,000 dollars, 30 cents. 135,001 dollar to 190,000, 37 cents. 190,000 and over, 45 cents. And again, you have to add 2% Medicare levy to all of those amounts, so they all bump up by 2%. Contrast this with a company and you get the following tax rate. So for a company with $10 million turnover or less, the tax rate is a flat 25%. If your company is earning over 10 million in top line revenue or it is an investment company, the tax rate is a flat 30%. That's it. Nothing else. Really simple. I hope you found today's video useful. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to leave you with this video to watch next and I will catch you in the next one.